this is the prototype design for our IoT based home security system. The system implementation might seem a bit raw, however the actual system will be wired in a similar manner with a few modifications to compensate for the large number of sensor nodes deployed. The system runs on the popular ESP32 microcontroller unit as shown. The large number of sensor nodes deployed entirely use up the GPIOs on the ESP, leaving only a few miscellaneous and input-only pins on the board. Hence, for practical implementation of the system, multiplexes would have to be used to reduce the number of pins required exponentially. ESP32 stays comfortably at the backend at a good vantage point to overview all sensor nodes and at a place where it can get a solid Wi-Fi signal. Router will usually be close to this microcontroller unit so that it gets good signals. Going over the basic design, this is the MFRC522 RFID card reader which will form the core of the security system on the front door. This is the ultrasonic sensor used to detect a person's presence on the front door. This is the companion 16 x 2 LCD display to be installed on the front door alongside the RFID reader and the keypad shown here. This keypad is a failsafe in case the user's smart card gets lost, is broken or doesn't work. Keeping that in mind, the passcode will be of longer length than usual 4 digit standard. So these will all be the components attached on the front door for user to interact with. And of course the servo motor shown here will be used to drive the door lock. Usually a magnetic door lock module is utilized, however for demonstration purpose we have put a servo motor to show the lock unlock mechanism. Additionally, Hikvision cameras will be installed on the exterior. These cameras will not be controlled through the ESP32 microcontroller unit. Instead, it's maintained using its own DVR with a massive storage space of 6 terabytes or so to store a large amount of recordings. The DVR's port on the network is forwarded so that the cameras can be accessed outside of the local network and on the app from anywhere on the globe. Alongside these, there are a few miscellaneous components installed here like a couple of indicator LEDs, a buzzer, and a LD1173.3 volt voltage regulator. And of course, the 9 volt battery providing the source voltage which is regulated down to 3.3 volts for use with the ESP32. Going over to the working of the system, every single action that the system takes is logged and sent over the app along with the timestamp to notify the user. I will be displaying the screen recording of the app as I take actions and show how the messages are received on the app for each action. This is how the system reacts upon scanning the correct smart card. Note the LCD panel follows up by welcoming the user who scanned and successfully opened the door. This is how the data of who opened the door is received at the app. Also note that the ultrasonic sensor has detected the presence of someone on door. As you can see, upon scanning a wrong RFID card, the door doesn't open and the LCD panel displays unauthorized user. The data is received on the app in this manner. Total 3 attempts are given at a time to unlock the door with a smart card. The LCD displays the attempts remaining after each unsuccessful scan. Note that the number of attempts will be reset once the correct smart card has been scanned. Upon 3 successful incorrect scans, <laughs> As you can see, the scanner gets logged, data is sent over to the app, and keypad comes into the picture. This is how the system reacts upon the entry of an incorrect passcode on the keypad. This is how it is displayed on the app side. Upon entry of the correct master key code, the door unlocks as usual and the RFID reader is activated again as well. The data again is received on the app. For detecting force entry, we have implemented a small circuit attached to a read switch which is actually a magnetic switch. Let's take a look at it from a better angle. As I mentioned earlier, these are the miscellaneous components, LEDs, buzzers, LD1117 and of course the enamel battery. 
This is the force detection circuit, the read switch along with the magnet and the loud DC speaker connected to the circuit. The idea is to hook up and hold the read switch firmly on the window pane while the magnet stays loosely on the glass. Upon breakage of the glass, magnet will easily come off setting off the alarm as shown. The notification about the exact window broken is also sent to the user via the app as shown. The speaker connected here will be replaced by a 12 volt mini siren in practical implementation which sounds an alarm large enough to give the neighbors a headache. Every window in the house would need to be wired with this circuitry to make the breached entry foolproof. To compensate for the large number of sensor nodes versus lower number of GPIOs available on the ESP32, a multiplexer or an encoder can be introduced to exponentially decrease the pins needed. Besides these functions, the app can be made interactive based on user's preference. Commands can be entered on the terminal to communicate with the ESP32. I am showing a couple of basic commands as examples here. Clear can be useful to keep the terminal window clean and delete unimportant logs with a single command. Also the app can be used to access Hikvision cameras as shown. It redirects to the login page for Hikvision DVR. Upon entry of the correct password, we are re redirected to its app to view the camera fee. So this was our IoT based home security systems high level overview. For the practical implementation, there is plenty of room for user customization and hence the system is very flexible. We demonstrated the base raw version of the circuit and its app which can be modified as per the requirement. However, fundamentally, the system stays the same. Thank you for watching.